Good morning, Sarah, and thank you uh, very much for joining us. Uh, you have quite a significant announcement this morning. Tell us all about that. Well, it's a very interesting and very important announcement. What we're doing is in relation to the investigations for rape, we're making changes to third party material requests. That's material that is held by organisations like medical institutions, schools, and it's when the defendants will ask the victim and uh, the police will find out what the historical records are in relation to that victim. Our announcement, in a nutshell, is saying that those requests can only be made when they're necessary and proportionate. Historically, there have been really invasive requests mm. for information that's not even relevant. And we have to stop that because we have to make sure that we um, build trust for our victims to make sure that they fulfil the whole process and go to trial. Yes, because we know uh, from uh, various reports, anecdotal evidence and indeed other evidence that uh, people who are the subject of sexual abuse find the whole process of coming forward very uh, re-traumatising sometimes for them. So is this an attempt to try and make it easier for those people who have suffered to come forward? In a way, yes, it is, because we want victims to have confidence that their whole history will not be delved through for irrelevant information over really intimate issues. Um, and we will make sure that the police and the Crown Prosecution Service can only get relevant, necessary and proportionate information. And we really have to do this to regain trust so that victims can come forward, be they male or female, and um, to make sure that they stick with it. Because historically, people after a year of this sort of invasive um inappropriate requests at times sometimes give up because psychologically there it's, it's too hard to carry on so we want to make it easier for a real victim to get justice so i suppose it's uh, the balance between uh, what's known as a fishing expedition <laughs> to yeah. what is really necessary and who decides uh, sarah i think that's important to let our listeners uh, and viewers know who decides whether it's necessary or proportionate to have these documents uh, for the police well, it's going to be set out in strict guidelines, which will come in through the legislation. So for the first time, we're going to have firm parameters so that we can stop fishing expeditions. The court process should not be a fishing expedition yeah. to try and, to use a colloquialism, trash a victim. Mm. It needs to be proper requests for what's relevant for the court process. That is fair. History has moved on with the digitalization of records and information with mobile telephones. We've had to change the way we think about rape investigations mm -hmm. and we need to get up to date. We need fairness for a, a prospective defendant or a yeah. perpetrator. We also need fair, fairness for the victim. And because of the way that the digital media has moved, the focus has just been too easy to focus onto the victim and to ask for information which isn't really relevant and actually quite hurtful. And so, again, for our viewers and listeners, what sort of information in the past would have been asked for or requested in connection um, with uh, a victim that comes forward? What sort of thing are we talking about here, Sarah? Well, it has been commonplace for requests to be made, for example, of a woman's entire school career through digital records. Mm. Um, sometimes it might be the notes of a, um, a domestic violence counsellor. Mm. Um, it could be their health records in general. And there may be something on there of a gynecological nature or a cosmetic nature that somebody doesn't want to be paraded in front of the whole process and is actually relevant to whether they've been raped or not. So it's the question of proportionality, what is actually necessary and proportionate, rather than what does a perpetrator's legal team think they can do to disprove the rape. The onus needs to shift a bit more from the victim. Um, obviously, we do have issues of credibility that need to be looked at. But it has to be proportionate. It needs to shift more onto the actual victim, the actual perpetrator. And if you have a burglary, you look at the person who's alleged to be bur um, committing that burglary. You don't focus unnecessarily on whether the house is safe or not. Yeah. So I think we need to move away a little bit from the victim. But within the realms of fairness, obviously, it's got to be fair yeah. for the accused and for the defendant, uh, as well as for the victim. And will there be sanctions in the legislation or in guidance um, in terms of uh, those police officers or indeed the team uh, for the defence who ask for unnecessary uh, documents or, or information? Well, if inappropriate information is asked and gained, there will be set out a strict criteria of what is wrong. And it will be quite obvious what's gone wrong. And yes, there will be sanctions. But of course, you do need training. There will yeah. be clear guidelines and officers will, and prosecutors will be expected to do things properly. We are working on a review which will come out within four, four months, a really 
tight review about the um, time frame for what those sanctions will be. But if anybody does ask for that information, um, there'll be disciplinary procedures for police officers. Uh, that there may be other forms of sanction, but there will be clarity is what we need. And yes, if a police officer has um, stepped away from what is lawful, there will be legal you know, ramifications for that. So it will have teeth. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, that's good to hear, Sarah. Well, finally, uh, obviously, this has been the week where we've had uh, uh, serving Metropolitan Police Officer David Carrick um, plead guilty to a number of rapes uh, and sexual assaults. Obviously, I wanted to give you the opportunity to respond to that, Sarah, as a minister in the government. Uh, and obviously, this uh, sort of... Um, uh, announcement today, we hope will give victims uh, more confidence to come forward if they have been the subject of a sexual assault uh, or indeed uh, a rape. What's your reaction to that horrific uh, set of circumstances that were outlined this week? Well, the Carrick case is absolutely horrific and it's shocking, mm. but I do welcome it coming forward because what that means is that there is rigorous review going on sure. now. And I know that the Home Secretary has asked every police force through the police chief's council to review all the information they have to check officers and even staff members against the national databases that we have this is i see this although it's horrific it's an opportunity we need to do better and now we are going to do better so it is it's awful absolutely dreadful we need to regain trust in our police we need to regain trust and we're committed to doing active steps we're not just talking about it we're doing it now yeah, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us this morning and bringing us that quite significant news uh, around the prosecution of rapes and sexual offences. Thank you. Thank you, Arlene. Pleasure to talk to you.